So here goes. This is the Canon AE-1 program. A lot of photographers, a lot of YouTubers, a, a lot of photo content creators say that a camera like this is a fantastic beginner camera. Some might even say it's the perfect beginner camera. I believe they couldn't be farther from the truth. Here, here, here's what we need to talk about. Now, I understand why people like this camera. The AE-1 program is a fantastic camera. It's super solid, made out of metal. It'll last you a very long time. That camera is older than I am. I get why people suggest it. It's a camera that stands the test of time. But if I was a beginner, if I was just getting into film photography, not very experienced in photography, and I wanted a camera to start that journey with, I don't think I would recommend the Camera A1 program. I wouldn't recommend the Canon A1. I wouldn't recommend the Nikon F3. I would not recommend any SLR that came from the 70s or the 60s, regardless of how great it is, regardless if it stands the test of time. I'm thinking from the mindset of a beginner, and that is where my recommendation is actually different. So this is the Canon Rebel 2000. This is actually the camera that I do suggest that people look into as a beginner film camera. And there's a lot of cameras that I would say are similar to this camera. So like for example, the 500N, I think it is, the Canon 500N. Uh, you can get a Canon Rebel G. I'm gonna go through and tell you all the reasons why a camera like this is a much better first camera for a film photographer than any of the other cameras that were recommended at the start of the video. Number one, we gotta start with price. When I got my A1 program, uh, I paid about $270 for it. So if you were brand new to photography and you were just trying to see if you even like this, just to get the camera alone, you're gonna spend around $200 to $300. Editor Larry here, I needed to jump in for a quick second. Yes, I did buy an expensive version of the camera. I have a little bit more peace of mind when I'm buying like the best looking, best quality version that I could find. Uh, I don't like to spend money to buy other people's problems. And so I tend to stay away from cameras that look scuffed up, cameras that look used and neglected, or just look like they've, uh, they're have they very close to retirement age, so to speak. So if you look for the Canon AE-1 program right now on eBay, you can probably find some comps between $110, $150, $112, something like that in that range. You could probably even find like a good version that has a lens as well. You don't have to opt in for the top premium version of the camera like I normally do. Again, it's mainly so that I'm buying the best version that I can get my hands on instead of, oh yeah, sorry man, um, the film rewinder broke, or oh yeah, sorry man, there's some noises inside the camera that I forgot to leave out of the description and things like that. Even with the price correction of, let's say you can get one for 110, 120, 150, you're still gonna wanna hear the price of the Rebel 2000. The Canon Rebel 2000, I can go on eBay right now and get one for like $30. So let, let's, let's start there. If you were a beginner, if you didn't know that you wanted to do this yet and you just wanted to try, which investment seems more reasonable to you? You know in martial arts programs when you get that free week and you get a uniform and it's like $40, it's like they make it as cheap as possible for you to try this out and see if you like it. You know, they, they give you even a little white belt and you get to go in there and throw a couple moves. They don't charge you $300 for the intro program. They charge you $40, $50, something reasonable for the intro program so that it feels like a no-brainer, like, oh, of course, I'll do this, great. Instead of going to the movies once, I'll go take karate class. <music> Second thing to keep in mind, um, since the Rebel 2000 was actually made, I think the first one was 1999. Uh, Lord Jesus, please don't flame me in the comments if my history is wrong. Uh, I think the first one was like 1999, maybe 2000s, but that's when this camera was produced, meaning, the internal electronics that make the camera were made in the 2000s. The light meter that is inside the camera was made in the 2000s, or at least was assembled and put in the camera into the 2000s. But it definitely wasn't made in the 70s. It definitely wasn't made in the 80s, if you get what I'm saying. So before I get into more details here, I really wanna talk about the whole emphasis and why I'm making this video. It's important to know that I'm looking at it from the beginner standpoint, I wanna make sure you have the tools that you need to learn for as cheap as possible. And when I say cheap, I don't necessarily mean quality, so maybe I should change cheap to inexpensive. I want you to have the most inexpensive option to figure out if you wanna learn photography on a film camera or not. And I think that your entry level for everything, for camera, for lens, should probably be $100 or less, in my opinion. And with that in mind, you can get film, you can get camera, you can get batteries, you can get neck strap, you can get lens all together for less than $100 if you go with uh, a Canon Rebel 2000 or a 500N, uh, 
I think it's a Canon EOS 500N or a Canon Rebel G, any of those. I'm not just pushing Canon here, but like that's the line that I know the most so I can speak about it with confidence. All of these cameras are like $30 cameras. They have all the features and functions you could wanna to use to have manual or assisted control over your camera while you're doing film photography. And it's a newer camera. And it's the cheaper camera. It's inexpensive. You're really excited to shoot. You didn't buy a neck strap yet and then you dropped it. Like if you make a rookie mistake, would you rather make a rookie mistake, drop your camera with a $300 camera or with a $30 camera? This is why I, it's not that I get upset, it's just, it's why I disagree that getting a very, very magnificent, like sure they sold millions of Canon AE1s and AE1 programs, they sold a ton of them, they're out there, they're available. Price of $300, I just, I can't tell a beginner to sign up for that. What I can do is tell them to go to eBay with $100 right now and you can get a camera with lens, maybe a neck strap, you can go online and buy even $15 film, get some batteries, you can be out the door with everything that you need for less than $100. My favorite point and the one that I wanna make and I, I really wanna leave you guys on this is to all beginners out there, when you're in the beginner stage, right? Some people might convince you, buy the camera that will grow with you, that can do all the things, right? Like it's, it's got the, the highest shutter speed, you know, some cameras have, I don't know, maybe like up to 8,000th of a second or something ridiculous. I think the Rebel 2000 is one 2,000th of a second at the max. What I'm, what I'm getting at here is one of the things that is important is this camera will get you started. This camera, it has, it has features that will do the job well enough, right? But when it's time to upgrade, I would rather know why I need to upgrade versus buy the best camera from the start and maybe overspend because it has features that I will never use or not need. This camera will get you started. This camera will let you have aperture priority mode. It will let you have manual control over the camera. You can add flashes to it. It has a hot shoe. Uh, more importantly, <laughs> you can use EF lenses. So before the Canon EOS R came out, their newest the RP, the R, the RF line of lenses and all that stuff that came out, I think like maybe four or five years ago, however long it's been now, maybe three, three, four, three years ago, whatever. Whenever that new line of Canons came out, the Canon EF lenses was top of the, this was, this was the glass that Canon was using on all their cameras. It is the previous generation, but all of the photographs that you had seen professionally taken on Canon cameras, right? Like we're still using EF lenses. That was the top of the line up until a few years ago. So if you're a beginner and you've never done photography before, I'm telling you that the glass that goes on this camera is still professional level glass all the way down to beginner entry level, but because it's still recent, because it's still new, it's widely available. Meaning you can buy a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens for maybe hundred bucks, brand new, eh, like 110 bucks, brand new, right? You can buy a secondhand one for $80. Now, when we go to the Canon AE-1 program, for sure, when you buy an FD lens, you're buying it used, you're buying it secondhand, you're buying it hoping that it stood the test of time, and you need to look at details like, this lens has no fungus, this lens has no scratches, this lens still operates perfectly. You're reading a description because where are you gonna find a brand new version of a lens that came out in 1970 something, 1980 something? Right now, you can find EF lenses that were made like two years ago. Still in box, brand new, ready to go. Red ring <laughs> means L. Anything red ring for Canon is them signifying to you that this is the top quality, this is the professional stuff. And I can literally take the professional stuff, I can take my $30 camera and I can just, my $30 camera, <laughs> I mean, now, I don't know how much you know about this lens, like this is not necessarily like the most expensive Canon telephoto lens that you can get, but it's pretty nice. All that I'm trying to tell you though is, is I slapped that $600 lens when I bought it onto my $30 camera. Just, just, just like that. And so not only is there availability to buy these lenses, but the secondhand market for EF is still huge. So you can sell your camera gear to someone else who needs it. You can sell your lenses. You can keep your lenses. You can upgrade your camera. Because of the versatility of the lenses alone, I feel like going with a Canon camera that uses EF lenses for as cheap as possible is the ideal setup in my opinion. I have a $30 camera that can use $100 lenses all the way up to $2,000 up to $10,000 lenses depending on which one you're buying, still in box, blah, blah, blah. You know where I'm going with that. You can use the professional glass 
on your camera. So when you're ready to get a new lens, you can just pop off that old, you know, uh, so, so when I bought my first EOS R, it came with this quantity lens. It's like this cheap little telephoto lens. Uh, I think if you wanted this lens specifically, you might pay like, I don't know, 30, $40, maybe 60 bucks. Uh, I have no idea, but I feel like that's about what it would be worth to somebody. Pop that sucker off and you can throw on professional glass. So I just don't want people to get suckered into the hype. I don't want people to get suckered into the fad of buying really cool gear that gets recommended and you know not knowing any better. If you want to buy an, uh, a Canon A1 program, like Godspeed, go for it, enjoy yourself. You'll have a camera that will last a really long time. You're going to have a camera that's going to be hard to grow with in a lot of ways in regards to like getting new lenses because just the hassle of trying to secure a good lens. If you've never bought a used lens before, how do you know what to check for? If you've never bought a used lens before, especially if you have to order it from somewhere on the internet, sight unseen, there's a lot of hope and faith that you have to have that the photos are good, the descriptions are good and honest, that it gets there on time. There's so many reasons, so many factors where I would rather tell you, why don't you get a camera that'll cost you maybe 35, 40, 60 bucks at the most. I don't know. I'm sure it'll go higher than that if this video ever gets popular. but. I think your, your Canon Rebel 2000, your Canon Rebel G, your Canon EOS 500N will always be cheaper than the A1 and the A1 program. There are much better cameras to grow into, yes, 100%, but you're just starting. You don't know if you wanna do this, but you wanna try it. Why do you wanna spend $300 or more to try it? Spend the money on something that's gonna do the job well and I don't know, go shoot, go have fun. Like seriously, I, I will always have a Rebel 2000 in my possession. Sure, there's a little bit of nostalgia for me because of where I was in life when this camera came out, but simply for the fact that I can get EF glass, I can slap it on this camera and I can still enjoy taking photos. I can still change all the settings that I need to change. Uh, batteries are, I can find batteries for this camera if I break the camera, I can spend another $30 to get a new one instead of spending $150, $200, $400 in repairs on a camera that came out in the 70s, on a camera that came out in the 80s. Oh no, we don't have that part. You're going to have to buy another camera that's parts only and take parts out of that, right? Like as these older cameras get older, it's only going to be harder and harder and harder to find parts and repair them. So even that will be a problem with this camera someday. And I feel like until some of these camera companies start actually making brand new SLR film cameras. The Rebel 2000 series, like anything in that line is just, it's smart money for beginners. <laughs> it's smart money for beginners. I mean, even I still use this camera. I still love this camera. It's a fun camera to learn on. You can put on professional glass. You can find professional glass. You can literally find lenses for this camera that were made in this decade, <laughs> right? Like there's, there's so many selling points, but overall, again, knowing that you can spend a hundred bucks, get everything that you need and go shoot, cannot beat. Like this is the way to go. If you want to learn film photography with an SLR and you, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, I think that this is, this is where you want to be.